What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. You know, the HSC is one of those things where if you screw up one assessment early on in the journey, it can be really easy to feel like you've screwed up your entire HSC, you know, that you might as well quit. But this couldn't be furthest from the truth because in fact, it is never too late to turn things around. And today I'm gonna to be chatting with Maddie who, you know, during her HSC ended up getting a 30% result for HSC chemistry. Um, but at the end of the journey, was able to score 70% and, and really achieve a remarkable 40% turnaround for HSC Chemistry. Now, not only did Maddie do this, she also managed to get into her goal dream university course with an ATAR that was up to 12 ATAR points below the advertised guaranteed cutoff. So in today's interview, we're going to dive in and we're going to find out uh, you know, how Maddie turned her results around and how she took chemistry from a 30 to a 40. But we're also going to find out how she managed to get into her, her dream university course despite being below the ATAR cutoff. So welcome, Maddie. How are you going? I'm going pretty well, thank you. It's awesome to hear. Now, um, I want to just dive in and, and chat about this, this painful HSC chemistry assessment. So you scored 30%. Uh, I don't want to bring back memories, but um, was that the first assessment that you had for year 12? I'm pretty sure it was one, like we had multiple, but like, like they were around the same uh, percent. But yeah, I think it was one of the first. Okay, so it was one of the first. And when you got that 30% back, how did you feel? Not gonna lie, pretty deflated. Just like, wow, chemistry is a lot harder in senior, like senior years than junior years. And it was pretty, uh, it, was it was hard to get over, but I had support from my teacher, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been. So, I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, it was upsetting. Was there a moment there where you thought, I just wanna quit this thing, like this sucks, I just wanna stop chemistry, and you know, I wanna just quit the HSE? Quitting the HSC, not really, but uh, like leaving chemistry, definitely. Especially like some of my friends left. Like one of uh, like one of my friends, Michelle, she left chemistry like around like uh, like mid year eleven, and I'm like, no, my pal, that made it easier for me. So yeah, so you know, rather than uh, 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 quitting the HSC total, of course, I and mean, that was a bit of, you know, I suppose a, a dramatic way to think about it. Ultimately, it sounds like. You got the bad result. You were disappointed, um, frustrated, and you thought about, do I drop chemistry? Mm. Now, you kept it. Uh, you kept it. Now, I suppose, um, you know, I just want to fast forward for a moment. Uh, you know, your final result, what was your final result for HSC chemistry? I got around 70%. Okay. Also, not going to lie, it's around that. I know it was around the 70 somewhere. Okay, cool. So, you know, it was quite a transformation, okay, in the end, right? Because it was at least, sounds like even a little bit more, but it was at least a 40% transformation in your results. And um, now, what degree are you studying at university? So, you know, you've got accepted. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to be going to Macquarie Uni for the Bachelor of Game Design and Development. Awesome. And what, what's the, what, do, you know, do you know what the guaranteed ATAR cutoff was to get into that degree? I think it was around 77. Yeah, right. I don't think there are any, like, other decimals after that, but 77. Yeah, I think it was a, a flat 77, that's right. And so, um, you know, if you mind sharing, how did you end up going with your ATAR? I got around a 65.35, which is like about a little bit below the, the guaranteed ATAR, but I got in through uh, Macquarie's early entry. Okay, so fantastic. So you were 12 points below, give or take. Um, and yet you still got into your dream course, which is really fantastic. And so you did that through early entry, as you said. So I just wanted to ask, because we will come back in a moment and dive into chemistry, you know, and, and work out what you changed for chemistry. But, um, you know, uh, what, what prompted you to apply for early entry? Like, why did you apply for Macquarie's early entry? Well, I know my marks weren't the greatest and my stress was like, it was pretty high and that was triggering a little bit in my auditory processing disorder. Had that since I was born and like it wasn't that much of a big deal like like junior years, but senior years, yeah, like I started to notice that I couldn't listen as well in class. It was a bit difficult to complete work. So I went through early entry to like help me relax about my ATAR. Which is awesome. And it achieved that, I think. You know, it sounds like from the chat we had that you felt a lot more relaxed once you got early entry, which is great. So you put in your application. What do you think helped 
your application stand out so that uh, you know Macquarie Uni offered you early entry? Uh, I think it's the like the range of activities I did because the early entry it like it sees like what extracurriculars you do, like what other activities you do outside and inside of school. And the club activities I did was robotics, uh, pride club, and science club. Awesome. So you had these diverse activities that you were maintaining during years 11 and 12. So you, you didn't quit them just because you had the HSC. Um, so you kept them. Um, and then you've included these as part of your early entry application. And because you were wanting to do uh, you know, game design and development, it sounds like, particularly like the robotics club, was it robotics that you said? Seems like it's quite relevant as well for them to go, okay, well, there's clearly a passion that you have here um, for what you're gonna do, which is fantastic. So what advice would you have for other students who are applying for early entry as they write their application? I say put in like the things that are like related, but also show your other interests in like just show what other interests you have it really makes you stand out to like just makes you stand out in your application yeah that's about it <laughs> yeah, awesome. and so I, I think what i'm hearing there is like really um it's okay to be yourself first of all right and if you can showcase the uniqueness of who you are through the different activities that you do i mean because yours were quite disparate, you know, you've got Pride Club, you've got Robotics, you've got the Science Club, like it shows um, a good spectrum of, you know, the, the, the interests you have, but also I think a little bit of your personality. Um, and so it seems like that went a long way in actually helping you um, get that, that offer, which is really fantastic. So now, um, you know, to come back to all of this, right, you know, you got a 30% in chemistry and yet, you know, you're sitting here now today in your dream degree for university, which is really amazing. Um, when you got that 30% uh, for HSC Chemistry, uh, what did you do? What did you start trying to do to turn things around? Well, I, kn I knew I needed to put a bunch more work in. Like, I did put work in, but it didn't seem to be enough. So I had a talk with my parents saying, I think I need tutoring, like just to like get me more into the zone and like be with other people who who would need like who would need help and who would also like help me so i came to art of smart and since i think it was beginning of year 12 a little bit of end of year 11 uh that i started chemistry tutoring and along with math tutoring at art of smart yeah awesome and so you were you were working uh, in adrian's chemistry class um, and so Adrian, as some context, is the head of science here at Art of Smart. He leads chemistry and physics and I think he's incredibly passionate um, about teaching and about the sciences. So, you know, what did that support look like each week? So, what, you know, like it was a class, small group class, but what were you guys doing in the classes that helped? Uh, I think it was just like the time that we put into like each of the questions that we looked into. Like he explained a, a lot of the questions like and how we got to a certain answer or like why it couldn't be anything else. And I think just the, just the time put in to the work along with someone who's very passionate really helped me uh, increase my score. That's awesome. So what I'm hearing from you is that, um, you, know, you, you know, it was time ultimately, like the more time that you expose yourself to complex ideas, the more you're gonna understand them. And then it sounds like there was exposure to questions. Um, and then it was exposure to questions. It was making sure that you had a strong understanding of what was going on uh, and getting a feedback loop on your writing for those questions and how you could better articulate an answer. Is that, is that correct in terms of capturing what the classes involved? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Now, of course, it wasn't just though what you were doing here you know, in the classes with Adrian. I mean, you were obviously still doing things at home, oh, yeah. right? So what, did it, what were you going away and doing at home that you felt also helped you turn your results around for chemistry? Uh, like I would like rev review what we did in like past lessons. I would, I would try to like, like we had the textbook, so I like might read ahead a bit so I can have like a sort of idea of what we might talk about next week. So I'll be, it'll be easier to grasp the concepts we're about to touch on. 
Fantastic. And I just want to flag for a moment before we dive in that, I mean, you know, that's one of the things I see for students that do end up doing very well in the sciences is this idea of trying to get ahead a little just so that you can familiarize, you know, familiarize yourself with complex ideas so that your understanding can be much deeper from the classes that you're in. So that's, that's I think, awesome to hear. What else were you doing that, you, you, you know, really contributed to you turning your results around? I guess being motivated overall. Like the low mark, like it might have been sad to look at, but it also motivated me to like get a higher score as well, I guess. So it really kicked you in a gear. Yeah. And now were you writing study notes for chemistry? Um, you know, was that something you were doing? Uh, on the odd occasion, but I didn't let it take up too much of my time. Because again, like it would stress me a bit, stress me out a bit too much. So I tried to keep it to like, all right, like on like, on the night after I've like had chemistry, like either at ArtSmart or like at school, I would like do a little jot down, like have a quick read. And then if I didn't have anything else, I'll just relax. Awesome, so from a memory point of view, it sounds like what you were doing that was important is you had that consolidation, like you'd learned something. And then even if it wasn't a fully fleshed out set of notes, what you were doing was consolidating what you learned to make sure that you understood it. Um, now, if you weren't spending all the time on notes, um, my understanding for chemistry is that it's much more about application. So were you doing a lot of practice questions then? Was that something that you found yourself working on more so? Uh, it was kind of hard to do uh, like practice papers because the, the HSC syllabus changed for all of the sciences. Yeah, all of the sciences. And so that was kind of hard. So I kind of like just looked at the textbook we were given find stuff that like we're looking into at the moment and I'll just sort of read through it. I wouldn't really do the questions. If not, I would ask my chemistry teacher for anything that could help. Like You could do additional. Yeah. So, you know, you've got trials in HSE that are now coming along. Um, what did you do to study and prepare for those exams? I had discussions with people who were in my chemistry class because like who else would know like the syllabus, like as much as like, well, besides the teacher, as much as me than like other students in my class, like they might know like more about this certain topic and I might know more about another topic and we could like help each other out. So discussion between classmates was really good before and like, even just like an hour before an exam, <laughs> that really did help. I mean, it sounds like you did it more than just an hour before an oh, exam yeah, though, right? <laughs> that was just an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it sounds like, and it's something, a strategy that we do talk about with students is this idea of teaching each other. Because you're right, you know, you get the benefit of someone else knowing something and, and when you teach something and you don't, you do a bad job of teaching it, they call you out on it and they're like, oh, but what about this and what about this and you forgot that and then you get some feedback on, oh, I've got to improve this. So it's a really powerful strategy. So were you doing that sort of frequently? Like how, what did it look like? How often were you getting with your peers to, to sort of work with each other and, and discuss and teach each other? Like if we had a lesson before lunch and like if I was like still confused about a thing, I would like go to like one, like I have a few friends that were in my class. I'm like, hey, do, do, do you understand that? I don't really, can you tell me a bit more? Awesome, so what I'm really hearing from you, Maddie, in terms of you know the key thing in turning your results around was um, one um, working on understanding, and it seems like you know you were quite uh, strategic is maybe not quite the right word, but I think to an extent you were because obviously you know I'm mindful that you were sharing that you know you, you were getting quite stressed during the year as well, and so it seems like you were quite strategic and going well. What's the smallest things that I can do um, at certain points in time that will help me consolidate my understanding of what I'm learning? Um, without me needing to then get too stressed about doing all this extra work so that I can get the best possible result for myself. And so what I'm hearing in that, which I think is a really great approach because it's so strategic and, 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 and defined, is that each day you would consolidate by chatting with, a, you know, writing some stuff down, you know, in terms of what you understood, what you didn't understand. And if you didn't understand something, that same day you were actively asking peers and friends to help you understand it. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Which I think is really great. And so I think what, what I think is really awesome there as well is clearly you weren't afraid to admit to a friend, I don't get this. You know, like, uh, did, like I'm confused, right? <laughs> um, which I think is really powerful because it can be really easy when you're in a school context to not 
to not say I don't get this because you don't want to, you know, you don't you fear looking stupid. Now clearly you didn't, you know, you didn't feel that, which is fantastic. What helped you feel comfortable to to ask your friends? Was it just the nature of the relationship you had? Well, I think mostly it was the nature of our friendship because, to be honest, I'm just pretty open with like my mistakes, so I didn't really mind saying hey, I don't get this, can, can you help me out? Like, I'm not afraid to ask help. And that sounds like a really powerful piece of advice there. Um, I'm just hearing, you know, this sense that really, um, you know, it sounds like throughout your journey and turning your results around, a theme is you weren't afraid to ask for help. You know, like you got the 30%, you weren't afraid to ask your parents, I think I need a bit of tutoring, you know, like, this isn't great, you know, so you asked for help. It sounds like every time you didn't understand something, you asked for help for your peers and your teacher, which I think is awesome. So I guess, um, you know, just to wrap this up, a, a final question for you, Maddie, is, you know, uh, I think it's, as I said, not uncommon for students to get, a, a particularly with chemistry, a, a poor HSC assessment result. The new syllabus has made life a little more challenging as well. What advice would you give to, a, a, you know, a current HSC student who is watching this video right now that has got a bad HSC result for chemistry, you know, an assessment, who is wanting to improve it. What advice would you have for them? Uh, I guess you basically sum it up, uh, just don't be afraid to like, ask a teacher, ask your friends, who, have, who has to be in the same class as you, of course. If you ask anyone else, that would be weird. Um, ask your parents like, to like, reach out to say, hey, could you help my my child <laughs> with uh, with a bit of study or just discuss about it a lot. Like if you do it a lot, it's just engraved in your brain as well. Cool, so it sounds like two things there. Ask for help, don't be afraid for asking to help. It sounds like it's, you know, you don't have to do it alone. Get a support team around you, you know, teachers, students, parents, tutors, whoever it is, um, and then just talk about it a lot, right? Do that teaching, that discussion technique um, and use that as much as you can, which I think is really, really powerful. So there we have it, guys. We've just heard from Maddie, you know, how she managed to, you know, do two things. One, turn a 30% into a 70% plus HSC chemistry mark. And number two, how she managed to get guaranteed entry into her goal university course at Macquarie University through early entry, despite at the end of the journey, uh, you, know, uh, you know, missing the, the actual guaranteed cutoff by 12 points, which I think in both cases, an incredibly empowering and motivating story, because I know that if Maddie can do it, uh, so can you. So guys, if you do need support, remember one of Maddie's key takeouts here is don't be afraid to ask for help. Make sure you get your support team around you to help you through the HSC journey. And you know, if you do need support, that's where Art of Smart can help. We've got an incredible team of teachers, tutors, and mentors that are here to support you, not just with the specific academics, of course, we can help with that, but also more broadly with you know your organization, study, motivation, planning, exam prep, and more through our Pathfinder program. So if there is any way that we can help, don't be shy, get in touch. Otherwise, all the best for you as you navigate the challenge that is the HSC.